Hi, how are you? It's been such a long time since I've seen you. I actually filmed this video last week, but I lost the footage and when I wanted to edit it, well, there was no footage to edit. So right now we're just re-recording and I actually don't mind, but you know, I am eating lunch. So my mom yesterday made some poke bowl with some um, tuna and I didn't get to eat with her yesterday, so she saved me a plate and I'm eating it right now. And I'm also having some white and mint tea. So today we're going to be talking about the books that I finished in June and the books I'm planning to read in July. And I have a really ambitious TBR, especially because I have a lot of work to get done. Like I have a lot of work this month, a lot. Like I have a class after class. I This is really good. And also, I I am doing a second major, so I'm about to finish my first major, which is one year away, that graduation. My first major is pedagogy. Started a new major, and that is international relations. So I'm gonna have a little less time to read because now I have to study a bit more. Anyway, last month in June, I actually finished four books, and that was a very big milestone for me, especially because I haven't really finished multiple books in a single month for a couple years but we're gonna run down first the books that i read for this month and also uh the books that i'm planning on read on reading sorry next month so let's take a bite and let's just sit down have lunch together and discuss so the first book i finished at the like it was the first week of the month i think it was catch 22 by joseph heller so if you guys don't know i think i've talked about this in a previous video but catch 22 is a war book so it's a world war ii book it's about uh, the experience of a pilot whose name's Yosarian and how it's just like it's supposed to be a humor novel you know it deals with the intricacies and the bureaucracy of war and just how ridiculous it is sometimes how how just these decisions are made and just how it works on certain levels it also explores the human condition in a very humorous way it takes its time to really introduce a wide cast of characters and just a colorful range of people who you get to meet and who have strange arcs and at first everything's so bizarre and then it treats with such horrible horrible topics in a very lighthearted way it makes you think like what the fuck's going on it's inspired by joseph heller's actual experience as a war veteran and i I'm not sure, but I think he was also a pilot. We basically kickstart this book with Catch-22, which is a sort of paradox that at the beginning just states how I don't want to fly any more missions because I feel like I'm flying, I'm, I'm going insane. And then they tell you, Sarian, like, you know what? You admitting that you're going insane is probably the sanest thing that you have ever said. So you are fit to fly more missions. And that's just a full of situations where Catch-22 is enforced in a way that's just not, it just doesn't feel legal, you know what I mean? About corruption as well, it's about consumers and capitalism, about economy in times of war and how people tend to get ahead or to take a certain advantage in time of need and then it makes other people more needy and it's very heartbreaking towards the end it's got very very valid points i feel like everything in here is amazing like it it does drag at some point it's not a full four five star because it does drag at some point you know it's a 500 page novel and it has to close a lot of loose ends by the end because of all of the characters and all of the situations that it introduces so it does make sense that it is quite long but it, it still kind of drags and in my opinion it cannot be condemned still but it you know it was still a bit um, tedious to go through especially because there's seldom any paragraph breaks and you do have to like consume a huge chunk of text and sometimes I just had to go back to it but honestly it's a great book it's it's marvelous and it's genius and I can't stop thinking about it even if though it's been like a month and a half since I finished it so Catch-22 was the first book that I read this year this year this month I am so sorry last month yeah the next book that I finished was Leo Tolstoy's Childhood, Boyhood, and Youth. Leo Tolstoy is one of the Russians. Uh, they say that this book is one of his most accessible novels. This is a sort of trilogy of shorter excerpts of Tolstoy's childhood, boyhood, and youth. Even though this is about a fictional character called Nikolai, people tend to speculate that this is semi-biographical because it does uh, match up with 
certain things or places that he was in like throughout his life. Honestly, the writing here is gorgeous. It deals with a lot of different themes. It explores what it is like to become an adult and to settle into someone's identity. And because I'm still into that transition, even though Tolstoy does address the youth part a little younger, like 16, you know, his childhood is like before he turned like 10, he, he was like seven, eight. Then boyhood is everything from when he moved to Moscow, I think it was Moscow, like the big city. He was like 10 until he was like 15 or he was 13 until he was like 15 or 16 and then when he entered university in his youth he was like 16 so that's when youth takes place and it does explore a lot of what one's identity is and what you want to be based on what people around you think of you and it deals with perspective and honestly Tolstoy just has very beautiful writing like he's definitely a master of imagery you can feel yourself in the scene because of all of the different devices that he uses to just create that atmosphere I know that the Russians are are very very like the novels are very thick and they just have a lot to say and a lot of the Russians are very existentialist or other like kind of depressing ideas like they develop those in their writing so this was honestly a great place to start and also Vladimir Nabokov who wrote my favorite book of all time Lolita one of my favorite books of all time really endorses Leo Tolstoy so my my next read is Anna Karenina Next book that I finished reading is The General in His Labyrinth by Garbito Garcia Marquez. It was a work of art. It was genius. The writing was so thorough and detailed and expository and I just could not stop reading it. Gabriel Garcia Marquez is a literally genius and he used to write articles for the newspaper so he has a vast knowledge of what the human condition is like. So this book was actually about Simón Bolívar in his last year of life when he made like a final journey, a biographical account of last year. And it's just so marvelously written. It goes through to tell you the story of Simón Bolívar, but by going in retrospect with the places that he visits. So if he visits a certain city, he will remember what he felt in that certain city and what events led to him feeling this way or how he was received at a certain point in time and how that contrasts how he is received when he is like 40 something almost 50 years old there's a lot of great themes here that explore camaraderie that explore war and love and affairs and just how he was so committed to independence that he became an almost tyrant at a time and there was just a lot in here that I loved. There was a certain scene here where he talks to one of his comrades and they are just discussing like their ages right and Bolivar, Simon Bolivar is like I'm older than you by eight years and then his colleague says like yeah but you know if war wounds, if my wounds were years I would definitely be the oldest. And he says, oh yeah, and so-and-so is actually older because he has 13 battle scars or whatever. And then very bitterly, he says to Simon Bolivar, and you will be the youngest for you have not a scratch on you. And that was such a powerful scene. Uh, it makes me cry. I'm writing a lot in the margins because I had to look for definitions almost every single time. He used language that was so ar archaic, or maybe not archaic, but I just never heard of certain depictions so it was very exciting to re-fall or to fall in love again with my native tongue which is Spanish through this author whom I am now starting to admire much more. I do want to reread 100 Years of Solitude because that movie, well it's, a, it's an Netflix show that's in production and it's coming out later this year so I want to reread it and I'm just so excited. The last book that I finished last month was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee and I was enjoying this book so much when I first started reading it in a weekend I read more than half of this book and I was enjoying it so much that I told myself you know what you can't you're allowed to read this book as long as you finish the other books so I had to finish Childhood Boyhood and Youth and The General in His Labyrinth before I allowed myself to finish Pachinko because I knew I was just gonna like I was gonna fly through it. It was one of my favorite novels. This is like a, a sort of epic novel that follows a family through the generations and it starts with an immigrant woman who goes from Korea to Japan and this is a woman who 
makes this transition in a Korea that's occupied by Japan. So it explores Zainichi Koreans, it explores discrimination and just otherism in Japan towards Koreans. It broke my heart. The first half of this novel was truly heartbreaking and I do want to reference Edward, um, I'm sorry, Jack Edwards. Did I just say Edward? No, I'm sorry. I wanted to reference back to uh, Jack Edwards. He's, he articulated this really well. He just said that the latter half of the book could have been better. I feel like she, um, Min Jin Lee, wanted to like condense or wanted to wrap up a lot of loose ends or there was just a lot of themes that she wanted to explore in the third book. So it's, it's three parts. It's called three books, right? But the third part of the book I feel like could have been longer or at least uh, Min Jin Lee could have made another book because I did feel like that was a little anticlimactic uh, compared to the first half because the book started off so strong, it's so devastating. It really did bring a tear to my eye. There were deaths in this book that I cried about. I also binged this show in two days. The second season's coming in uh, August, so in a month and a half. I cried a couple of times because I was just so attached. Do you, I don't imagine myself being this attached. I think that if my grandmother died, I wouldn't be this attached to her than I was to these characters. One of the best books I've ever read. Before we transition on to the books that I want to read, I'm going to have my vitamins. So yeah. And I've been reading this throughout June and July. I'm reading this little poetry collection by Jared. Melanie Hopkins uh, and it's called As Kingfisher's Catch Fire after one of the poems that's in here. So uh, Jared Hopkins was a Catholic, I think it was Catholic or Christian priest, I don't quite remember, but he has a lot of poetry that's centered around nature and around God and just the love that we should have for nature as humans and how we sometimes we just destroy nature. It's the first poetry collection I really try to analyze because I, I tried to do some poetry by Edgar Allan Poe a while back and I think I documented that like it was a 24-hour readathon I wanted to do and by and it just was not the same as as Ken Fisher's Catch Fire. So this is one of the little black classics, the Penguin Little Black Classics. I have a box set of 80. I am loving it so far. Like honestly, I feel like he has so many depictions of nature and it's just, he also coined, what was that? He coined a certain technique, which is called sprung rhythm. And that's just the number of accents in a line are counted but the number of syllables is not so the result is that Hopkins is able to group accented syllables together creating striking onomatopoeic effects it's beautiful so I sound every time I finish just going through these I sound them out I don't know why I just feel a tremendous roar in my chest every time that I go through these poems out loud and I am in love with it half of this is a collection of poems and the other like third of the book is just some of his um, an expert an excerpt of some of his journals I'm really taking my time with I'm analyzing three to six poems a week just because I really want to like savor it and it's just delicious. I used a randomizer uh, because I have a, an Excel spreadsheet of my entire book collection. I'm almost down to 500 books. That helps me just kind of randomize a couple of my next reads because I am a big mood reader but I'm also very indecisive. So I sometimes if I don't know what to read, I prefer someone to tell me what to read. So I randomized it also so that I can go through my collection a little faster. Uh, oh my god, I forgot. I also read Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Oh my god. Give me like a second, I'll be right back. I literally had to run upstairs. It took me 30 seconds, but I also read Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. Oh my god, I can't. I can't believe I forgot this book. Okay, this is the second to last book that I read this uh, last month, Such a Fun Age by... I know, I know you probably heard about this book because it's been around for ages, but it's about a black babysitter who is babysitting for a rich white family in Pennsylvania. And one day she's asked to take the child to a grocery store where she is stopped and accused of kidnapping the kid. So it's most common theme is racism and how we handle racism in the present day or like 10 years ago. It does so in such a genius way. It reads almost like a thriller because certain situations just get so tense and you feel like there's no escape and you just kind of 
want to cover your eyes a bit or you feel like a certain tightness in your chest. It also touches upon subjects that have to do with finding yourself in your, in your 20s or you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going, you want or you're in desperate need of direction and just comparing yourself to others who feel like they've accomplished more than you or you feeling like you're not accomplished because you want something that feels so small and that you should be aspiring for more and how these these feelings are not necessarily bad and they can help you like motivate you for things that are yet to come or why it's also it's so good to feel safe and to feel comfortable the dramatic change of scenery from her own life to the life that she wants to live or where she works and the image that she wants to portray or that other people want her to portray and the role that she plays in certain people's lives and oh my god i am out of breath i was so satisfied with the with the ending of this book honestly i actually this was one of my conditions for reading pachinko i was like if i can read this in two days i can definitely finish pachinko in a weekend and I did. Now that we're done with the books that I did read last month, we're gonna do, we're, I'm gonna continue with what I said. And you know, we did randomize some of these reads, some of these picks. Others are just books that I've been wanting to read for like forever and I need to read right now. The first book in the book that I started reading for this month is actually 1984 by George Orwell. So right now this is my Spanish edition and also my compendium. It's got 1984 and Animal Farm. And I started reading it here. To be honest, I was really kind of bumped out. I felt like I needed to read it in English. So I ordered my copy today and it's arriving in a couple hours. So hopefully the delivery person interrupts me in the middle of the video so I can show you what my edition of 1984 is going to look like. Basically, 1984 is a one of the best known dystopias and George Orwell, I kind of consider him the father of the dystopia novel due to the fact that this book was so significant and important and it just changed pop culture forever. It's literally a dystopia where Britain lost World War II and now we are subjects of communism. Basically humanity right now is a subject of, ca of um, sorry, communism and just there's literally no freedom of speech and we censor everything if it does not fit the current agenda. So far I'm really loving it but I felt like it was such a shame that I couldn't enjoy it or savor it in its original language so that's why i ordered the english edition also one of the books that was randomized by my random number picker is s hubs the dolphins the whales and the gudgeon it's a very short um poetry collection s up is a greek slave and it's just a story told in like a prose kind of poetry way. Um, I don't usually read these kinds of things so that's why I'm really excited to read this. One of the books that I'm currently reading is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kong. So as you guys know, I love The Poppy War. It was one of the books that I read last month, the month before, and it was one of my favorite books of all time. Um, and I, I barely just started it last night. I was honestly not in the mood for reading but I felt like I was I needed to kill some time so I started it so this is one of the big boys that I'm gonna be tackling but it's not gonna take me realistically it is not gonna take me that long to finish because I love the poppy war another book that I ordered this one for my birthday is letters to a young poet by uh, Rainer Maria Rilke so I've been wanting to read this for so long because one of my favorite youtubers Emmy is just in love with Rilke and because it's so short it's like 70 pages long I know I'm gonna be able to finish this in one sitting and I just want to savor it <sighs> damn I ordered a couple books I ordered a lot of books for my birthday I say my birthday was just an excuse for me to buy a ton of books without feeling so guilty but one of the things I ordered last month was the full Dostoevsky collection and the book that I really wanted to get to is Crime and Punishment. This is a Wordsworth Classics edition. It's so pretty and I love Wordsworth because at the beginning they have a couple introductions and it helps you better understand the book in an academic setting. So I'm really excited to get into Fyodor Dostoevsky because Crime and Punishment is the first book that I'm getting into. They say it's 
like the first novel you should read of Dostoevsky. Another two books, the last two books that I want to get to this month, and I feel like this is very ambitious for me. They were also randomized by my random number picker, and the first one is Mario Benedetti. El amor de mujeres y la vida. This kind of translates to love, women, and life. And it's just a poetry collection as well. Maria Benedetti was a Latin American author. So it's just a poetry collection that I really want to get to. And lastly, I'm really excited about this one, but I feel like I'm not going to finish this, this, this month. I feel like this is going to carry out, but this is Faust by Goeth. And I love this because it's got on one side the original uh, German and on the other side it's got the English. This is the collection of books that, oops, this is a collection of books that is awaiting me as well as the collection of books that I passed or that I went through already. So. This is honestly kind of exciting. Um, I don't know what to tell you. It was an exciting month. It's going to be an exciting year. Uh, this is just the first half of the year and I am getting into my reading again. I'm studying a lot more and that's because I just kind of fell out of this depressive slump kind of thing. Um, and I'm just a lot more motivated to work on myself and to do things that I used to enjoy a lot when I was younger and that I feel like shaped my identity to a point where not doing them feels like I am offending myself. So I'm really excited to get through this and I'll see you guys next time, I guess. You know, if you guys want to tell me anything about the books that I've read and the books that I plan on reading, I would really appreciate you guys' suggestions. I would really appreciate you guys' input. I would love to have a debate and a thought and, and just know your thoughts like in the comments and stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you guys, and I'll see you. Ah, bye, dude.